Welcome back, fellow adventurers, to Swords and Wizardry 101 uh, with Professor Ben. Uh, this is episode 10. Yes, we did it. Uh, we reached 10 episodes. It's super cool that you guys are still showing a lot of love to this video series. Um, this one is consistently getting a large amount of views, which I'm very happy about because when I created this series, I was worried that there were so many Swords and Wizardry veterans that there wouldn't be enough interest in this uh, sort of series. But um, everyone is still loving it and interacting with it, which I think is awesome. Uh, the last video, creating a dungeon, um, was went very well. Um, there were a large amount of comments on that video as well. Uh, a specific request that I received um, was to make a video further explaining how to actually physically map out the dungeon, fill it, etc. So I am going to be making a full video on how to actually sketch out the dungeon, how I do it on grid paper. Um, grid paper is super easy. It's used, it's similar to like, you know, paper used back in, you know, for in math class for like trigonometry or that kind of thing. Um, and that's going to be a whole separate video because I really want to go in depth and, and I uh, hands on show how I actually craft my dungeons. However, today's episode is on the flip side is wilderness adventures, as you guys can see on the screen. And yes, I'm going to keep the webcam up. Um, you guys liked it in the other video, just so it didn't feel as much like a disembodied voice, you know, talking and that kind of thing. I feel like my chair is a little high. There we go. Um, as you guys know, if you're, if you're um, unfamiliar with the series, um, this is a long form content. Uh, I do ramble a little bit, so just stick with me. But in the end, it's, it's usually to try to get to a nugget of knowledge that I've learned um, in my RPG career or uh, experience thus far. So, like I said, last episode we talked about dungeon adventures. And dungeon adventures are very important to any RPG system, in my opinion. Um, especially modeled after, like, you know, OD&D, original Dungeons & Dragons, similar to Swords & Wizardry, is, is basically this is where all these adventures started. Um, you start off in a town, there's a disturbance in a dungeon nearby, or, in, you know, in an old crypt, and you go exterminate and loot the treasure. Um, however, eventually, you're going to want to expand your reach outside of just Dungeon Adventure. Every group encounters this at some point. In my experience with my home group, um, we started off with Dungeon Adventures. Um, and then as they craved the worlds of RPGs more, we started venturing out into the wilderness, uh, the forest, the mountains, the Arctic, the coastal, just really any wilderness that you could imagine and just keep switching up the scenarios and, and the scenes and the environment so i'm going to talk a little bit today about wilderness adventure next up in the next episode is siege combat or special combat you know aerial combat underwater combat and mass combat with like armies but um today might be a little shorter just because i want to keep wilderness adventure and special combat separate because while they do intermingle, of course, they are separate ideas. So I'm just going to start off with the wilderness adventure. Um, so like, as I said, you know, you, you start off um, doing dungeon delves, and then you kind of want to broad, broaden out and build a world. Um, you know, uh, Dungeons and Dragons is in Swords and Wizardry is collaborative storytelling experience. So um, and it's stories of heroes and adventure and might as well adventure to all the reaches of the world as you can. So my advice for creating a world is to sketch out the world first so have your wildernesses all already panned out i actually have a very rough sketch of my first world that i ever built and only half of it because this is when i created it and then i started to stop it so i'm just gonna like show this to the webcam i guess i don't know if you guys can quite see it but basically, I just, you know, drew it out it's just like any other world. You know, it has some different regions. It's got rivers going through. It's got islands. So I highly, you know, that's not very descriptive or anything. And there's some mountain ranges and stuff in here. But that's what I recommend doing first is you can just grab a piece of paper just like this. You don't even have to have the grid paper and just sketch out your world and say, OK, there's a there's a forest here. This is the coast. This is a trade port. This is the capital city and so on. And just go ahead and, and flesh out your world or at least start with a region in which the adventuring is going to begin so um do that before you're campaigning but if you're already campaigning there's no reason you can't build it out yourself um and what i like doing and what i did with my world and my friend did with his world is we um built it together so the character's backstories actually had an impact on the world like i asked my friend like where would you like your character to be from and he was sort of like an outcast dwarf um, his dwarven clan was much known for strength in battle as opposed to like any sorcery. 
um, and his character was a uh, dwarven sorcerer. So he was sort of outcast for not being like the brutish dwarf he is. So we built this like mountain civilization of dwarves who are are very brute brutish. They're similar to like frost giants, you know. Um, so you can do fun things like that, or you can just build it yourself. It's totally up to you. Um, so this this is just this is just as exciting as dungeons, is, is because it's it's a, a stretch of epic fantasy. I mean, you're not confined to like walls, you know, as as you are in dungeon. So cool little piece of art, of course. Um, so once we have our wilderness panned out, we can start to adventure in it. Um, and the cool part about the Swords and Wizardry Complete Rulebook, which is absolutely free to download, by the way, for allgodgames.com. Uh, you can search for Swords and Wizardry, or you can go to the top link of the description to download this PDF that we're looking at now for free. Absolutely free. If you want the hardcover, you'll have to pay for that, of course. But, you know, I recommend at least getting the PDF. Because why not? It's absolutely free. Okay, so... I don't want to start with getting lost because for the beginners here, we'll talk about that in a second. I just want to talk about building up these encounters, building up a um, adventure into the wilderness, and which is totally realistic is you can just use wilderness adventures. Say, say your group really loves dungeon diving and that's all you guys want to do. That's perfectly okay. Um, I recommend still having um, wilderness encounters on the way, and which is super easy with Swords and Wizardry 101 is this is already... This is already done for you. Um, so encounter tables for wilderness adventuring. So as you see, we have clear terrain, um, which is like hillsides. Um, I, I would even say most of coastal is as well. Um, and then we have desert. We have encounters in forest or woodland terrain. And then we have the movement rates uh, of these things. So um, this might feel like jumping around a little bit, but I want to connect these dots before I go back and do the, uh, you know, connect the other dots. So as you see, we have these tables. So you'll take your percentile dice, uh, which is in your polyhedral set, and then roll them. And whatever percent you get, and depending on what in, you know kind of terrain you get, you go further down to the tables here. So uh, you can just start on these tables if you want, actually. Um, and then as you can see, we have hills or mountain, um, river areas, high seas, swamp terrain, so on and so forth. So um, we have these. And then... On top of that, we have a dragon table. We have flying creatures, which correlates to our tables here. We have humankind, which again, human humankind is going to correlate to our tables. Um, we have humanoid and giant encounters. So humanoids being sort of like kobolds, goblins, orcs, you know, like the off, you know, humans that still like stand on two legs. Um, Homo erectus, maybe. I don't know. I don't know the scientific word for it. Um because this is a world of fantasy, of course. We don't need that. Um, so then there's a miscellaneous monster table, and then there's a swimming creatures monster table. So for, like, your coastal areas. Um, and then down here we have a very more specific terrain area, like rivers, forests, clear terrain. So what I'm saying is there is an unlimited amount of tables for you to roll on to fill your encounters. So if you're not personally confident in putting the right creature in the right area, all of these tables are here for you. And then we even have an undead table encounters down below. I recommend using that more for the dungeon encounters, but you can totally throw them in the wildernesses if you want. Um, so this is really cool that this is at your disposal to use. And um, you can use these guys as NPCs. You can use them as uh, non-player characters. So, you know, someone that the characters would be talking to to get information from. I would recommend the humankind table for that or possibly the humanoids and giants table. Because often you're not going to be talking to, like, a manticore getting information out of them, you know. So, uh, as you can see, you can run into adventurers right there as well. And that is actually something that I want to bring up a point. Is, is while you're adventuring in the wilderness and while you're adventuring in the dungeon, do not hesitate to have your players run into another group of adventurers. It's totally possible. They are not the only adventuring group in the world. They might be in your campaign, in your world. This might be like humanity's only hope kind of thing. But personally, I had a conversation with Alan Hammack, um, who is a legendary TSR uh, writer, project manager, editor, uh, you know, of, of all merit. And, um, you know, Ghost Tower of Inver Inverness um, is what he's most famous for, among many other things. And he said his his beef with some adventures is that they don't run into other adventurers, which is kind of crazy that they, you would never run into another group of adventurers. So I love that that's on this table. Keep that in mind when adventuring in the wilderness that, you know, it could be a good encounter, you know, with, with other people of similar alignment and similar 
goals. You know, maybe they can work with them or trade information. Um, or it could be an evil group of adventurers adventuring for the wrong reason, and they want to, um, fight, and they want to fight you and, and take your stuff. So they are more powerful. You know, endless possibilities. Of course, this is the world of, of swords and wizardry. So while we're doing those adventures, there's a good chance that we get lost. Um, so. Uh, unless the party is following a course of, of trail or river, following a map, or have a native guide, there's a good chance of getting lost while adventuring in the wilderness. In forests and swamps, getting lost uh, can lead a party moving towards any point of the compass or not moving specifically going in circles. So, yeah, if you remember, like in The Hobbit, um, they're going in circles and circles and circles in the forest, um, and there seems to be no end because they don't really have a specific guide. That can happen very much in the world of Swords and Wizardry. So uh, roll a d8, starting from the party's intended direction. Count up seven points on the compass, so north, northeast, east, uh, southeast, south, all the way around. Um, and uh, if the result is an eight, uh, then the party is moving in a circle and gets nowhere. So it's basically just another way to simulate getting lost. So your chance of getting lost depends on your terrain. Um, so in clear terrain, it's only a 10% chance. You know, it's pretty clear. You know, you're going over a hill. It's kind of easy to tell where you're going. You kind of get a bird's eye view of everywhere. Uh, if you're in a desert, it's about 40%. Harsher conditions, you know, sandstorms. It's hot out. You get fatigue. Um, but it's still clear enough to see in front of you maybe. So you can figure it out from there. Forest is a 70% chance. Now we can take it easier on the, um, the Hobbit and Dwarves for um, <laughs> getting lost in the forest because it's the hardest one according to Zords and Wizardry. And then we have Hills, Mountains, Rough. Uh, rough you treat as hill or desert as appropriate um, so it's just another one just just in case you want to use a different role um, uh, swamp and woodland so there's a couple different ones that you can easily roll on to uh, get lost now if you have someone who perhaps is native to this air to this climate or environment but not this specific location so say I'm playing a fighter who is from uh, a small civilization in the forest i'm used to being in forests and how to navigate them but not this specific forest you know so maybe give them a better percent chance to roll um if they are indeed have a tough time going in circles basically and then vehicle movement rates so vehicle movement rates are more for what we call like a hex crawl so it's a big you know big world where the um the uh, areas are plotted out on hexes, and you use a specific amount of measurement to go from each area. So um, obviously, just keep in mind, how, how I recommend this is, is a much simpler way. Instead of specifically measuring out each um, you know, metric of movement, is um, just kind of eyeball it. Um, so just kind of eyeball it. You know, like a wagon or cart is going to have a tough time navigating a mountain whereas if they are on a trail you know you're probably going to be moving a lot more efficiently uh, a raft or a barge uh, doesn't quite move as fast as a sailboat um, or a um, a ship because a ship's a much bigger vessel so just keep these things in mind um, you know and it basically is just used from getting to one location or the other um, and how many days in between travel you have um, and then what kind of encounters can pop up over these days of travel. Um, take a sip of coffee real quick, if you don't mind. I, how I've always done this is, is I just kind of eyeball it, and I give my players a, you know, if you have a barge and you're moving down the river to the next town, it's going to take you about eight hours. So it's a day of adventuring, that kind of thing. I, I, I rarely get too crunchy with the numbers. And I don't think it's intended to be too crunchy with the numbers, but, you know, it has to be in here for the people who want to use the numbers as book of law, basically. Um, so I'm pretty sure that pretty much wraps it up. Like I said, it's a short episode. We're coming in at 14 minutes right now, roughly. Um, but basically, just keep in mind the environment that you're traveling in. I'll leave it on the piece of art. Nice little keeper castle right there. Um, and, uh, and build out your environment first. So build out your region. If it's a mountainous region, if it's forestry, if it's coastal, throw those creatures in there and then figure out what sort of vehicle they're going to be using to navigate here. So, you know, obviously make them pay for it. I You can give them out free from NPCs. You know, perhaps they save the town. You get a free horse with it or something like that. 
Um, do it kind of however you want to do it. So like I said, I will be making a full video on how to map out a dungeon. And then that, I'll, I'll also include in there some wilderness guides as well of how to map out your wilderness. Um, and uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll make those in, in the same video. Um, so that way you guys see a hand-on version of how to do that. That will be mixed into the Swords and Wizardry 101 playlist, even though it isn't specifically like a... Swords and Wizardry 101 seminar, sort of how we're doing it, like with these. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me today, actually. Like I said, I want to keep it short. The next episode of Swords and Wizardry 101, episode 11, is going to be special combat, uh, mass combat, siege combat, aerial combat, um, ship combat, which is like the water combat that I mentioned. And then we get into monsters. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it anytime. Comment down below how you build out your wilderness adventures and how much um, importance you place on them while running Swords and Wizardry. I always love to hear it. There's, of course, many experts on, on RPGs listening right now. Um, so I love to hear your guys' opinion because most of the time that you guys comment, it opens my eyes as well, and I do something new in my game, which is super fun, so I get to learn as well. Uh, subscribe for more content because... Um, uh, we are putting out a lot of content every Monday. Uh, we're putting out videos. So, yeah, have a uh, have a wonderful day. Be safe, everyone out there. Um, be good to each other, and let's keep going on adventures worth winning.